we're going to talk about Mary and the Mother Ray, the Ma Ray, which is the source of the name Mary. Of course. And people frequently talk about what about the feminine aspect of God? I heard a joke years ago that uh, when God created man, she was only joking. Feminists tend to enjoy that one. God has a masculine and a feminine aspect, and, and we teach that in the Charge of the Presence, but we're going to talk about the feminine aspect, the Mother Ray, and we're going to talk about Mother Mary in particular and how Mother Mary embodies that Ma Ray. And the name Mary in biblical days was actually more of a title than a name. And the women who were the Mary sisters were a special order within the community who performed a very specific spiritual function. And that's why when you look in Catholicism and look at the names of nuns, you often see Sister Mary so-and-so, Sister Mary this and that, and they have the name Mary in their chosen name because they still honor the title of what it means to be a Mary sister. When we get into the rosary and we talk about ritual and making the sign of the cross, and, and Catholics do that, and they, they touch their forehead and they touch their heart and then they touch their two shoulders, they make what's called the sign of the cross. And people ask about the purpose of ritual. And what ritual does is it takes energy that is unstructured and begins to structure that energy. And when ritual is performed, it's helpful to understand the meaning and the significance of the symbols and the behaviors that are part of the ritual. So I thought I would go into what is the symbol of the cross and especially the cross and the circle. And the father aspect of being is often described as father time. Also as spirit. So that's the vertical arm of the cross. And the feminine aspect of God is often described as mother earth. And that's the horizontal bar of the cross. And it's the intersection of father and mother. And it's the intersection of time and space that is the physical plane that is the earth. So in astrology, you will often see this symbol of a circle with a cross designating planet earth. And if you inverse the letters of earth and heart, you have it frontwards and backwards. Well, that would be like an anagram, wouldn't it? As above, so below. Um, I was going to show you the chart of the I am presence for that, actually. And somehow I forgot to have that one prepared for you. Let me just pull it up real quick. That line of the heart and the earth being the horizontal axis compared to the staff of the vertical masculine line of the father and the spirit coming down is very symbolic considering we just did the sh the episode on the threefold flame at the center of where those crosses take place so the anagram of heart and earth is very symbolically significant too i would say yeah that's perfect when we show the chart of the presence and we talk about this giant presence this is in the plane of spirit. This is the dividing line between spirit and matter at the level of the Christ conscious. And then this is the physical plane of earth. I often remind people that you can use this diagram to relate to the macrocosm as well as microcosm. So this is an individual being, and this is the human form. This is an individual spiritual aspect of a planet and this is actual physical planet this is a spiritual aspect of a galaxy this is a physical galaxy so you have as above so below the masculine 
and feminine polarity of everything that exists in matter, from a molecule to a galaxy and beyond. And that's an important concept to hang on to while we go deeper into this. My brain just hurt for a moment, to be honest. I, it hurt, I felt it ping. There was something that shifted in that, truly. It's, it goes deep, it really goes deep. I have a book, My Soul Doth Magnify the Lord. It's a beautiful book that was given by Mother Mary. And I want to read to you a few pages. Um, about the soul of Mary on earth. In the early days of Atlantis, Mary, the embodiment of the mother Ray, served in the temple of truth, where as a priestess of the most high God, she tended the emerald fires of the fifth ray. Serving under the masters of truth, Mary, together with other temple virgins, studied the healing arts and submitted to the disciplines required of every soul who desires to magnify the consciousness of the Lord. Working with the laws governing the flow of God's energy from the planes of spirit to the planes of matter, she learned that all disease, decay, and death are caused by an arresting of the flow of light at some point in the four lower bodies of man, and that this clogging of energy results from his misuse of the sacred fire with its attendant karma. She learned that the cure for disease is the harmonization of the flow through the light centers in the lower bodies, whereas the reversal of the process of death and decay is affected by the initiation of spirals of the resurrection flame within the chalice of the heart. Her mentors showed her how, once ignited, these spirals are expanded to include the entire being and consciousness until man becomes a pulsating sphere of white fire, the victor over hell and death, the incorruptible one. Thus long ago, in the temple of truth, where religion and science stood as pillars of alpha and omega, Mary experimented with the laws of flow that also govern the science of precipitation. Did she then know that in another life, she would be chosen to bear the son of God who would demonstrate these laws in the changing of the water into wine, the healing of the withered hand, the multiplication of the loaves and the fishes and many other so-called miracles by which he would introduce to the world the supreme methodology of sacred science? In all of her incarnations, Mary worked closely with her twin flame, the Archangel Raphael. He remained in heaven, the plane of spirit, to focus the energies of Alpha, while she made her abode on Earth, the plane of matter, there to focus the energies of Omega. Thus, together, they fulfilled the law of their God identity, their sphere of being, proving that as above, so below, God is omnipotent, omniscient, and omnipresent. With each life opportunity, Mary developed a greater concentration upon the image most holy of the Father who appeared to her as the I Am Presence. Her consecration to the immaculate concept of the Son became intensified with each passing day while she perfected her four lower bodies as vehicles for her soul's expression of the Holy Spirit. Her face shone with its inner light and her garments flowed to the rhythm of the flame. It was her magnification of the Christ light and of the mother flame that actually sustained the healing focus in the temple of truth. And it was through her daily devotions that its emanations were expanded throughout Atlantis. One with the cosmic virgin, she remained a temple virgin during her entire embodiment and left a focus and a flame that shall rise again in the new Atlantis to enshrine the fundamentals of healing mastery in the hearts of those who under the aegis of the law would be the true healers of the race. So that's going back more than 10,000 years ago throughout multiple embodiments on Atlantis. And in the Old Testament, we have stories of King David, who was actually a previous embodiment of Jesus. And at that time, his mother was actually Mother Mary. So she had come into embodiment on more than one occasion to be the mother of the soul that became Jesus. All part of a divine plan unfolding. Now the rosary is the gift that was given by Mother Mary to St. Dominic, the founder of the Dominican order in the year 1214. 
Now, we talked in the previous video about Las Lajas in Colombia and the image that appeared on the rock wall. And we see Mary giving the rosary to Dominic. And we also talked about uh, Saragossa in Spain, the Basilica of the Pillar, and how that event came about where St. James the Apostle was preaching and he couldn't convince anybody and he was almost going to be stoned to death. Mm. St. Dominic was in anguish because he was failing in his attempt to convert the Albigensian Cathar heretics. And he attributed this to the deepness and gravity of sinfulness of the heretics and the poor example of the Catholics. So he went alone into the forest and he cried and he prayed and he fasted for a number of days and then passed out from exhaustion and went into a coma. And during the coma, he experienced an apparition of Blessed Mother Mary and three angels. And they asked Dominic, dear Dominic, do you know which weapon the Blessed Trinity wants to use to reform the world? Dominic's response was, surely Mother Mary knows better than I do because she is part of our salvation. Mary then responded, I want you to know that in this kind of warfare, the battering ram has always been the angelic Psalter. And it's spelled P-S-A-L-T-E-R. The angelic Psalter is the foundation stone of the New Testament. Therefore, if you want to reach these hardened souls and win them over to God, preach my Psalter. Shortly after this apparition, he preached the Holy Rosary to the unconverted Albigensian heretic to modify the paternoster, that's Latin, pater, actually, paternoster, pater is father, noster is our, so it's the prayer that we call the Our Father, the paternoster, which was prayed 150 times in a row. In compliance with the apparition of Mary, the design of the St. Dominic Rosary came into being. So the initial rosary was basically pray 150 hour fathers. That's how it began. He set apart 15 mysteries of the rosary and he grouped them into three sets of five decades. Now, if you go to the video that we shared about Father Don Calloway's expose on the rosary, which is on our YouTube channel, Father Calloway does a far better job than I ever could teaching the history of the rosary. And you really want to watch that. It's, it's 90 minutes. It'll blow you away. We're just going to take some of what we know into a deeper level that Father Calloway doesn't know. He gives you the history in a phenomenal presentation. Was that the video with the, the documentary you had mentioned at the end of our interview? About that was Garabando. It was in the middle of our presentation. Did I mention Father Galloway? And it's it's a whole other presentation. It's the uh, I held up the book, The um, Champions of the Rosary, mm -hmm. the Spiritual Sword of Our Lady, and he he reveals why it is a sword. And we'll touch upon that right now. The meaning of the word sword, S word, S W O R D. The sword is the sacred word. The sacred word in action is the sword of God. Yes, we have to bring sacred back. We, Instead of we have to. Back, it's the sacred. Yes, woo! I love it, Michael. That's brain popping. The sword that forks the way forward is the sacred word. Amen. Absolutely. So the science of the spoken word and recognizing what the sacred word is and utilizing the sacred word, the gift of the rosary, learning how to speak the sacred word and the science behind the rosary is so powerful. Yeah. People gotta have this. They gotta have this understanding. That's why we're doing this. Absolutely. So the, the groupings were designated as the joyous mysteries, the sorrowful mysteries and the glorious mysteries. And so the mysteries would be spoken about and contemplated, meditated upon, during the recitation of the Our Father as part of the ritual of giving the rosary. This design helped the Albigensian heretics to better understand and imitate the virtuous life of our Lord Jesus Christ and the Immaculate and Blessed Mary. Now I'll give you the rosary beads diagram. 
And can you also mention about how the Our Father is slightly different in... I'm, I'll get to that a bit later. Awesome. This is the design, and you can go to... Um, I put it up on screen there, rosarycenter.org, or you can go to the Catholic website and you can learn about the design of the rosary beads. Uh, I have mine here. And so you can see the, the cross at the bottom and then the metal at the center and then the circle of beads all around. And they're all shaped in this way so that they have a large bead with 10 small ones in between. And you say the prayers as designated here and you would hold the rosary beads in your hand and you would move your fingers from one bead to the next and proceed around the rosary and say the prayers and announce the mysteries and contemplate the mysteries and come to completion. And it's about a 45 to 60 minute ritual of prayer and meditation to engage in. And it'll change your life. It absolutely will. It's powerful. Much more than people imagine. I've spoken to people who learned the rosary in their childhood and they don't pray it today and they don't want to pray it today. And they're tired of praying the rosary because they didn't learn it properly. And to them, it was just sitting there, bored to death, saying words over and over and over again. And if that's the manner in which you approach it, well, then don't bother. It, it's, it's pointless. You have to come into this with your heart and come into communion with the Holy Spirit and come into communion with the divine feminine who Mother Mary is a representative of and come into communion with Mother Mary personally and put your heart into the speaking of the word and then it will not just be meaningful it will become empowered by the sword of the spirit the sacred word flowing through you will come to life in a way that will be transformative Now, the words of the prayer, the Hail Mary. So the 10 small beads were the Hail Marys. The, one, the large beads in between were the Our Fathers. Let's go back to masculine feminine polarity. I am presence of spirit, and the physical plane is Mater, Mother Nature, Mother Earth. When we pray the rosary, we are invoking the fullness of being, which is God. We are invoking the Divine Father when we pray the Our Father. And we talked about this in the science of the spoken word. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven, designed to be a decree to call forth the will of God into perfection and manifestation. And then the Hail Mary to understand the words as a salutation to the mother flame to the, you could We'll get to the, the, the Kundalini in a minute. The divine feminine, the alpha and omega polarities of the cosmos, alpha being the father, omega being the mother. Hail Mary is hail ma ray, salutation to the divine feminine. Now the old Hail Mary, which for 800 years served well, Hail Mary full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. We have this now in a new form because Mother Mary came to Elizabeth Clare Prophet back in the 1980s and dictated to her what we call the New Age Rosary, where some words have been changed. And Mother Mary said, I don't want you to identify yourselves as sinners. I want you to identify yourselves as sons and daughters of God. So instead of pray for us sinners, it became pray for us sons and daughters of God. And Mother Mary said, I don't want you to focus on death. I want you to focus on your ascension. So you're going to say the word now and at the hour of our victory over sin, disease, and death. So using the science of the spoken word, using the sword of the spirit, we become much more clear and purposeful in our use of the word when we pray the Hail Mary with these new modifications to it. 
I'm going to read a few pages now about Christian prayer forms. And the evolution of the rosary. Also from the book, My Soul Doth Magnify the Lord. This is teaching from Mother Mary directly. Jesus taught his disciples how to pray the Lord's Prayer, saying, When thou prayest, enter into thy closet, and when thou hast shut the door, pray to thy Father which is in secret, and thy Father which seeth in secret shall reward thee openly. By this his followers knew that to pray effectively they must enter the Holy of Holies, the white part core of being that is focused in the flame of life blazing upon the altar of the heart. There's your threefold flame. That's amazing. This threefold flame of love, wisdom, and power anchored in the body temple is the seat of the Christ consciousness in every man, woman, and child. To enter into this cloister of oneness and to seal one's consciousness in the ineffable light of the Trinity is to secure one's energies in sacred service to God and man. The Father Presence, called the I Am Presence, dwelling in the secret place of the Most High that is the fiery core of the causal body, responds to every prayer uttered in the secret chambers of the heart. The reward for prayerful application is always forthcoming as the release of the energies of being into tangible manifestation through the blessed mediator, the Holy Christ self. The repetition of prayers, meditations, and mantras accomplished by the power of the spoken word need not be vain if they are offered sincerely and scientifically. On the contrary, by the action of the light, the verbalization of affirmations made in the name of the beloved I am presence of the Christ self is the fulfillment of cosmic law. This law has been made known to men through Old and New Testament prophets. For example, Isaiah wrote that concerning the work of his hands, the manifestations of his spirit in the plains of matter, the Holy One of Israel said, command ye me. In other words, God instructed his sons and daughters to command him to come down from heaven and work his works upon earth. The logic of this injunction, command ye me, can be understood only in the light of certain principles and precepts of God's laws, which we herewith set forth. It is our hope that out of this writing, mankind will gain a greater appreciation not only of the rosary, but also for all forms of prayer. When God created man and woman and gave them free will to be co-creators with him in the plane of matter, saying, take dominion over the earth, he turned over to them an entire world pulsating with light and life and energy in order that male and female, whom he had made in his image and likeness, might exercise their free will by learning the conscious control of cosmic forces through initiative and ingenuity, through discovery and invention. Thus, the twain were sent forth with a challenge and a fiat from the Lord. Go, be. To experiment with the forces of creation and to conquer time and space, whether by an innate genius or by the trial and error method, sons and daughters of God spiraled into form. Planetary homes provided by the Elohim served as platforms for the evolution of the soul and the mastery of the four lower bodies. Each planet was a sphere of influence, a force field for experiment. Yes, but an unlimited one? No. By solar edict, boundaries were established around each separate world and each separate system of worlds. These finite platforms suspended in infinity were designed and built for each new life wave consisting of millions of souls created by the Father, Mother, God with a common origin and a common destiny. Because their uses of creative energy were yet in the experimental stage, because their correct application of free will was not yet tried and true, pairs of souls like Adam and Eve were allowed freedom of self-expression within the confines prescribed as the bounds of their habitation. These bounds, actually bonds of love, could not and would not be broken until men and women should prove themselves worthy to penetrate infinity with perfection by consciously choosing God's will to reinforce the absolute goodness of their manifest creation. Having turned over to man the administration of his world, having given him the right to rule in the footstool kingdom, the Lord withdrew in order that his sons and daughters might show forth their determination and their desire to use their freedom, to glorify God in man, and to use God's energies for the carving out of their divine destiny in the plane of matter. If a man wanted God to be a part of his life, of his taking dominion over the earth, then he would have to ask him. 
by his own law, set forth out of the necessity to let men and women prove themselves, God, unless invited, not only would not, but could not intervene in the lives of his sons and daughters. As soon as man would surrender to God the free will which God had given him, saying, not my will, but thine be done, then God could and would intercede on man's behalf, assisting him each step of the way. Total surrender on the part of man, of his will, his life, his energies, and his purpose, allows God to manifest that total oneness of which Jesus spoke when he said, I and my Father are one. That is to say, I and my Father are one in will, in life, in energy flow, and in cosmic purpose. In the light of this knowledge, we are able to understand more clearly why the Lord would instruct his sons and daughters to command him into action in the world of matter form. Without that command, neither he nor the heavenly host are free to act in mankind's domain. God will not, he cannot, according to his own law, act in our daily lives or in our world unless we, by right prayer and right action, consciously, willingly invoke him into our midst. Therefore, the Lord himself has said, because he hath set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high, because he hath known my name, because man has known and affirmed the name of God as the I am that I am. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. This is a covenant between God and man, which the Lord can keep only when man loves God through daily devotions, when he affirms God's name as the fiat of being, and when he calls upon God directly for assistance. The statement, the call compels the answer, is well known to the initiate on the path. When the Lord says, command ye me, he is letting us know that the call of man will compel the answer from God. Without the call, there can be no answer. Therefore, we understand that there is a necessity for man to invoke God's energies with the authority of the Christ to actually command life to manifest the perfection of thy kingdom come and thy will being done on earth as it is in heaven. Of this ritual of commanding the law of the Lord, it is also written in the book of Job, thou shalt decree a thing and it shall be established unto thee and the light shall shine upon thy ways. Now, I'm even powerful. Know this, so, like, oh my God, how much sacred information has been held back from the people because it's so powerful, hyphenating the full on power being what it is rich in. And then understanding how culturally, which is the cult you rally with, that ultimately we're trained to give our power away in compared to with the truth which is that we are powerful beings and it is our free will that determines whether we will choose the left path of wrong choice or the right path of right choice, righteousness. Is that righteousness of the scared or sacred version though? This is the child's rosary to Mother Mary. What Mother Mary has requested is that we pray the rosary daily. And Given the times we live in, uh, a full rosary, 45 to 60 minutes, is quite a commitment. Many people find that more than they can do, especially if you're already working with Violet Flame and you have a, a decree regimen that occupies you know, a particular block of time. So Mother Mary gave us the child's rosary, which only takes 15 minutes. And this is the one that I pray every night before bed. And it's one that I've been able to maintain my commitment to because it's not so lengthy. 15 minutes is, is much more manageable. It begins with the sign of the cross, and then we have the keeper's daily prayer, and then we have the I am Lord's prayer by Jesus the Christ. So these are affirmations, very much uh, taken from the Lord's prayer, but spoken now in the uh, new understanding of the sign of the spoken word. The Hail Mary with the adjusted version, pray for us sons and daughters of God, now in the hour of victory over sin, disease, and death, it includes the call to the fire breath, the transfiguring affirmations of Jesus Christ. It finishes with the song, Glory Be to the Father. And we'll provide that to anybody as a PDF who would like to have that. Next up is going to be the Mother Force.
a very powerful and fierce energy when cornered. I'm gonna have to move this out of the way here, okay. What is the connection between the rosary and yoga? How can the rosary help us realize this fullness of God that you talk about? What is the connection between the practice of giving the rosary and the disciplines of yoga? The yogi who is working to attain soul liberation and supreme reunion with God lives in adoration of the mother force, which is known as the goddess Kundalini. It is the sacred fire that is locked in the base of the spine chakra. Similarly, the energy of the father force is locked in the crown chakra. When we have the union of these two forces within our being in the center of the heart, we then give birth to the Christ consciousness or what some have called cosmic consciousness. Making friends with mother Mary, one who has realized and released the mother force to the extent that she could ensoul the fullness of the Christ and bring forth the son of God enables us to go and do likewise. Contacting one member of the spiritual hierarchy who has attained on the mother ray reinforces our own path of self mastery. Just as we apprentice ourselves on earth to masters of a particular trade or guild, so we may apprentice ourselves to the personages of heaven. If we want to become a great musician, we study on the world's greatest musicians. If we want to release the mother flame, we apply to one who has already embodied that flame and who can guide and guard us in the release of this sacred energy. Now, we'll take a quick look at the yoga chakra system. This is a standard yoga diagram, shows the chakra, base of the spine, all the way up to the crown. This is where the goddess Kundalini lives. We see these spiraling pathways, which are the nerve channels. They're known as Ida and Pingala, running up the side of the uh, spinal column. The central column is called the Sashumna. The goal in the yogic practice is to raise the mother light the goddess Kundalini, all the way up to the crown chakra to unite with the father light in the crown. It is a, it is a practice that is frowned upon by the Ascended Masters. It is much more dangerous than you imagine. If you do not have the required self-mastery, when that flame, flame rises, it will activate energies in your electronic belt over which you have insufficient control and it can lead to madness total insanity and it can require numerous lifetimes to recover from so kundalini yoga is absolutely frowned upon by the son of masters they prefer that you learn through much gentler techniques one of which is the praying of the rosary when we pray the rosary we actually raise that mother light out of the base of the divine chakra and we are doing it with the assistance of mother mary in a way that is much safer and much more gentle. This diagram shows you the correct colors of the chakras and also shows the violet flame. There is a particular dispensation that was given by Mother Mary such that when we pray her new form of the rosary, the child's rosary is sufficient, we receive violet flame. So to give a 15 minute child rosary, has the added bonus of also receiving 15 minutes of violet flame. What a tremendous blessing. And symbolic too, considering we are all inner children in varying stages of development too. We need that assistance of mother to get us back home. We just absolutely need mother. Because you've said that the soul is the inner child. Absolutely. These are the books in the Golden Word of Mary series. This one, Mary's Message for a New Day, is the new version. The words are the same. It's just a new cover, a new edition of the book I was holding up, My Soul Doth Magnify the Lord. So everything that I was reading from, the teachings of Mother Mary, given by Mother Mary, including letters that she wrote to the students, including a number of dictations that she gave, are all in the book, Mary's Message for a New Day. Mary's Message of Divine Love is book two in the series, The Age of the Divine Feminine, book three, and Mary Magdalene and the Divine Feminine, book four, the Golden Word of Mary series. We have these in stock at Shambhala's Light. You can find them on Amazon. 
anybody who wanted to get to know Mother Mary better, highly recommended. 